Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Podcasting Mastered. I'm Chelsea, and I'm here with Wade as always. And we're going to talk about one of the movies that I feel like was kind of forgotten about this past summer, summer of 2023, Pixar's latest film, Elemental. And yeah, it really, it's like a sleeper hit. It came out and it didn't really make any waves or anything. And, and now it's on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> yeah. so and here true. we are. So it should be a lot easier for people to see now. But yeah, I, I mm-hmm. mean, it did come after the super big hit film. But I think it was, you know, we had Spider-Man earlier, like a couple weeks before this movie mm-hmm. came out. So I think a lot of people are riding that train for a while. But yeah, no, I'm, we're already going to say it right now. If you haven't already... Go watch Elemental. We're going to be talking about it. We're trying. We're not going to talk about too many spoilers because I think everybody should watch this movie. I feel like this movie overall just kind of brings you back to like the heart of Pixar. It brings you back to the good old days. There's, It's just a darn good film. Right. It's just, you know, and Pixar's thing is to tell a good story um, with very unique, interesting animation styles. They've never been here to make the next gigantic Disney hit. You know, look at most of the most of the movies that Pixar has related that hasn't been like Toy Story. And they're just nice, lovely stories that are fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And Elemental is is that. It is that in all of its all ways. Yeah. And this one's a little bit different for Pixar, though. This one is actually more of a rom-com. It sure is. I yes. was and I wasn't like I I wasn't really expecting it although I had like no expectations cuz like the trailers really didn't help you a whole lot with yeah. like what the movie was about outside of establishing a world where like all four elements live together in a city. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> when I first saw it I was like what is this like an inside out rip off? That's how I went into this originally. I was just like it was that same vibe I know except inside out is like emotions and stuff but this is still like it's elements you still have that like personification of elements and i was just like eh, i don't know this could go either way but dang i don't this yeah this movie uh was an emotional roller coaster for me <laughs> it was but it was it was really something special mm-hmm. and it and it covers familiar territory you know like the kind of concepts it uses to um to talk about its its whole purpose of the movie um are things that people relate to on a daily basis a minutely basis like mm-hmm whole reflections of generations of lives you know and it just it felt so good to sit back and just watch the cuteness of this movie just go and go and then you feel you feel the emotions with the characters um as they're forced to like face themselves and how they live and stuff like that and it just it makes you feel really good it really doesn't bring you down you know like at least i never felt that way just, I mean, with, it, you know, brings you down emotionally wise, you know, with the hits. But other than that, no, it's really trying to confront a lot of issues and finding a way to get through them all with all the different characters, yeah. which so good. But so this movie, I will give a couple facts because I think it's kind of interesting. So this movie is directed mm-hmm. by Peter Zahn and he's been with Pixar for a little over 20 years. He's mainly big in the animation department, working on storyboarding and stuff. His first film he directed, first feature film, he did uh, The Good Dinosaur. Okay. So that was the first Pixar film he did. And Interesting. Then this is the second right. one. But his uh, directorial debut was the short film, uh, Partly Cloudy. So one of those Pixar shorts. It's Which little... one is Partly Cloudy? I don't know if I remember it very well. I just know it has to do with the clouds. <laughs> okay that's huh. all i know i, ha- I don't I'll remember. have to go yeah i'll have yeah. to go back and like i've seen so many of them over the course of oh, our yeah. long long experiences with pixar i'll have to go back and check that one out i think yeah because i'm like okay now hold on i have to double check it because oh partly cloudy babies both human and beast are created up in the stratosphere by clouds themselves one cloud specializes in dangerous babies, creating a challenge for his loyal stork that has to deliver them. Yes. Yes. It was super cute. Yes. Wow. That one is... Okay, that feels like forever ago. It did come out in 2009, so that's definitely been a while. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But this director, so not only has he done, like, he's directed an animated short and also another film prior to this one and then worked in the animation department, he has also done some voice work for some of the Pixar films as well. Some of the characters he's done, his most recent character that he was the voice of was Socks from Lightyear, the adorable robot cat. Oh, really? Oh, that's fun. 
That is fun. Yes. He has also been, I think it was Emil and Ratatouille, so the brother, and he was Squishy from Monsters University. <laughs> <laughs> and another interesting thing about him, too, is that he helped create the character of Russell in Up. He designed really? Russell and he took a lot of inspiration with the character because that is like one of the first characters, probably actually first like Asian American character we see in a Pixar film. And he sure. like, he put a little bit, bit of himself in that character and he wanted it just to be a normal representation of an Asian American, not having any stereotypes involved with his character. And so we got Russell. That's cool. Yeah. So this movie elemental is a lot more personal. I think than the good dinosaur for him because he kind of used his experiences growing up, um, growing up in New York. So we see a lot of like, and then the diversity of New York and his parents were Korean immigrants. So he is a Asian American himself and his family having uh, two shops that he grew up like playing around and stuff that they owned and worked at in New York. So you, in this movie, we kind of see some of those parallels and also a big deal with him which there is a part in the movie which we'll get more into it but it talk like where there's the grandmother dying and her last wish is you must marry somebody who's fire and like he had that similar experience but his grandmother told him like you must marry somebody who's korean and he did not do that so <laughs> oh so, so this yeah. this movie is really really pretty big for him then very yeah. uh verifying i suppose <laughs> yeah for Some his similar, own life <laughs> yeah parallels and also yeah like as a little bit of a thank you to his growing up experience with his parents and just but it's also just a such a relatable movie as well so i think we can kind of describe probably the setup of this movie because we have our two main characters we have ember who is fire elements and we have wade who's our water guy but Ember's family, they come from Fire Town and they travel on a boat and land in Elemental City. And we see the very similarish vibes of coming to Ellis Island. We get that whole setup of what are your names? Mm -hmm. And we even get that specialness involved. Like, I can't pronounce that, so I'll call you this. <laughs> yes, I'm going to make it up. And here you go. Welcome. And then them dealing with finding a place to live because... In this element city, the first elements that like like were there was water. Then we also had the other big elements involved in this, as well as earth and air. And then it's kind of like fire is a little bit more the new one that nobody wants to associate with, or they don't feel mm -hmm. comfortable being around. So then they right end up, yeah. because the other elements they can live fairly harmoniously mm -hmm. with each other, or, or or like boost each other up, even you know depending on the combinations, but fire is tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. Or like at least the other elements feel like they can't, but we do definitely see yeah. some interesting interactions with even just like slight bumping into each other at certain points and fire on a tree. <laughs> 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 just uh, twigs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So after her parents move in, then Ember's born essentially at the beginning of the movie. And then, she idolizes her father and wants to be a good daughter and help like he has a shop set up and she wants to be the best daughter ever to eventually run the shop and take it over one day but she has a temper a fiery temper a fiery temper <laughs> i love how she turns purple whenever her mm -hmm. temper shows <laughs> yeah and there's even like because in the father's shop they have like some of like the neighbors hanging out there all day like having fun chatting it up with like the parents and stuff and i think at one point they're like i've never seen somebody go so purple before <laughs> 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 yeah but due to basically ember's uh fiery personality she ends up bumping into wade in an unexpected way <laughs> A very unexpected way. And yeah. also the happiness in my soul that there is another person, this character, I suppose, like named Wade. That made yeah. me happy. And I'm also so happy to be associated with this Wade because like this Wade is a cool guy. Oh my god, He's a cool guy. He's such a sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. 
<laughs> it made me happy. And also, like, water is, like, the element that, like, I, like, associate with the most. Mm. And also, that's just, that's cool for me. Like, yeah. I'm like, look, it's Wade and he's water. <laughs> No, talking about Wade specifically as a character, though, like, what a great character and also, like, a way to not have a toxic male character and just because of it being, like, the element water, but also, like, being, like, free with emotions and... Uh Uh-huh. Oh, he's very free with his emotions. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. But I... (laughs) I love it. But it works so well. Like, it was, I think, such a smart way to put it in about these different characters. Like of dealing with the elements like that like wade and his family like the element of water just like almost being like more transparent and open with their feelings and how they're all like emotional and like also sweet and adorable about like getting overwhelmed and excited by things and they like to cry a lot and everything and <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh <my> God. <laughs> for sure <laughs> <laughs> i love it And then with, like, Ember and, like, they're more serious and, like, she doesn't want to show any emotion, but she's also so focused on, like, trying to be the the best daughter she can be, but realizing she needs to think for herself as well. And then opening up Mm -hmm. to other people and opening up to another element. How dare she associate with water. A water. A water. Water is bad. (laughs) And, like, in the seeing, like, the parents' reactions to everything is just so, like, whew. Like, there's some real life going on in these situations. <laughs> oh, definitely. Even, like, both sets of parents, or at least relatives, because we mm-hmm. s- see that. I know, I feel like just I'm jumping around everywhere. Even, like, when Ember meets Wade's family for the first time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the, I love that. I think it's this is the very end, or the very beginning, I think, where, like, the kids are, like, running around and, like... <laughs> 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 And he's like, please don't hate us. <laughs> yes. Because they're like, ooh, can- what happens if you go in the water? Because, of course, like, they're water. So they, like, basically their, like, whole house is, like, a pool. And so, like, Ember can't step in it because she's fire. Like- <laughs> and so she so gets she, on an like, inflatable chair. I got an inflatable, inflatable chair and he just kind of, like, pushes her around the house. And then, yes. the, yeah, and then the kids swim up and they're, like, shaking the chair. Yeah. They're like, what happens if you fall in? And then that's when he goes, like, genuine <laughs> curiosity. But, oh, my God, like, calm down. <laughs> it's so funny. But it's also like they've never seen a fire person before, which is how the uh, special uncle reacts as well. Who's like, yes, I, I dabble with painting, you know, watercolors, but we call them just colors. And then being like, oh, you speak so well for someone like you, Ember. And then <laughs> and she's like, everybody, thank, thank you. <laughs> you're like, I'm speaking the language I've spoken my entire life. Wow, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at that moment, because you see like Wade's mom just like freeze for a moment and just be like, I can't believe this is coming out of his mouth right now. Like, everything Yeah, like, why did you just say that? <laughs> like, but Wade's mom, though, Wade's mom mm-hmm. is so just, like, amazing. Drip, drip. She's so cool. Wise. Drip, drip. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, she takes, she takes care of Amber, Amber from, like, the very beginning. Like, yeah, she can, like, see, like, the relationship blooming between Wade and Amber. Mm-hmm. And she's, a, she's right there yes. to, like... To be there for Ember. Like, I just, I love her so much. And then she's like, I, you know, like, I know people. Like, you can get a job with these people. Like, I see you like to do this. Why don't you, let's push that a bit farther. Why don't you come work? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's just yeah. how supportive she is immediately of Ember. Just, it really, it really spoke to me a lot. Yeah. No, definitely. It was really nice to see that. But I think it also plays into some interesting uh conversations on privilege as well. Because, like water like the society basically element city being built for like most of the elements except really for like fire but especially for water and because like i mean wade's family is kind of well off and so like his mom like sees the possibilities at ember but also has all those connections and was like oh during you know our meal i was able to like pop out and like hit up my friend who wants to offer you an internship and so like it's a really nice thing but it's also hard for ember too because you also see this going through her about like she didn't know there were other options out there for her and it really starts like Is she yeah. no she was allowed to like want something for herself that wasn't yeah her family shop yeah mm-hmm so there's a lot of interesting things to play with that. But 
We also get to see some interesting sides too because Ember's parents are pretty interesting because I think she has different expectations on who your, her parents are than how they actually like cope with things later on in the movie because like she only sees her dad as like his sole goal is to like run the shop and it to be the best thing and that she must please her father in all these ways. And then you have the mother who's kind of kooky, who's like the back of the shop, like love interpreter. She is, she is something. And she came around, it's like she comes around faster than I thought she was going to, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, cause yeah. She, <laughs> because of how like mystical she is and reading people's like love I signs and love. stuff like that. <laughs> like smell the love. Yeah. But like she also, that didn't blind her from anything either. Mm-hmm. So she's she also becomes very supportive surprisingly fast yeah but because of her gift you know like whoa Mm -hmm. okay yeah but yeah surprisingly faster than even ember comes along to things because it's like you said this is a rom-com so you of course deal with the like will they won't they first meeting they don't like each other type fives like can they even like find common ground and elements they don't miss that's what ember's been told her whole life but there's a lot of funny moments. You see a lot of interactions, not just between like fire and water. You also see it with other characters. Other. <laughs> other the unique other. characters. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Claude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the young boy who likes to come in the shop every once in a while and. Oh my gosh. Hit on Ember and she's like, child, you go away. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm growing up but because... he grew his own flowers <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh my queen <laughs> and he has some ridiculous lines there's one where i was just like this is funny but also so cringy it was the uh oh i think she was talking about something and, and then like claude's father was like an act of god or an act of claude <laughs> uh. and i was like oh <laughs> i'm sure she didn't just like set him all on fire but she always just sets like the flower on fire that he always tries to give her (laughs) yeah she's trying to like reject his feelings you know because he's a kid (laughs) yeah but But he never gets in the way either so there's that (laughs) no yeah he only pops up every once in a while and then we also see like uh gail the big boss gail her and her her sport obsession yes and the reason she gets involved it's because I guess I can do the brief set for the story besides, like, dealing with, like, their romance. But it has to, like, you also deal with the fact that, like, Wade works for the city and was an inspector when he popped in, basically, to Ember's, like, family shop and everything. He wrote a bunch of citations because, like, the place is not up to code and Ember wants the place not to get shut down. And they're dealing with, like, why is there water coming in to a place, a fire town? Fire town should not have water, and why are water coming? Why is water coming into these pipes that were super old and hasn't been maintained? And so, yes, they have to go meet with the boss lady, who's also a huge sport fan, which is such a funny thing to see because it's a Pixar movie, so they're gonna put a lot of details, a lot of fun, creative things in animation, lots of things going on in the backgrounds, but also lots of creative places we get to see people interacting, and that gets to be a big sports game. Which is like extreme oh, yes. basketball <laughs> quidditch <Yes>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Which has a pretty big, like important moment where you get to see like, cause Wade just being like a likable character, a likable guy and just like talking with everybody, but also just showing love and he, support. He like connects to, with like, people. Yes. Yeah. And, and Ember can't do that, which is like where her temper comes from. Mm-hmm. She she gets mad at people because people are annoying sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> and she can't connect to those people, so she gets angry, and it and yes. it explodes. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but Wade, yeah, just Wade can just connect and get people on his side immediately, mm-hmm. and do the wave, and do the, the wave, an actual wave. <laughs> yes. that was amazing. Oh, that was so great. There's so many small moments too where they just like really play up like the whole like element aspect or like different things because like the fire like characters like anytime like they get like water splashed on them or anything or anything where their like their fire goes down a little bit they like eat like twigs and stuff and it replenishes them or you see like (laughs) the baby in a grill at one point like 
the the like mother uh, walking the, ca- the carriage was <laughs> like, like, like the grill like a yeah. like a barbecue grill oh my god that that made me laugh so much and then the baby got a whole <laughs> bottle of lighter f- fluid <laughs> i was sitting there just like wouldn't that be like mountain dew for a baby like you wouldn't give them that that can't be right <laughs> no i know i was like oh boy that's dangerous <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> and then there's so many things because, like, it's the whole, like, gift for Ember, too, is, like, this glass making, which is so fun to see, but also works so well being, like, fire and stuff and working with, like, broken shards and either, like, fixing the mess she made or creating something new and wonderful, like a pitcher or something or a mm-hmm. cool little flower and stuff like that. So it's fun seeing the way they further personify the elements, I guess. Oh, Yeah. It's it's really they they made such a lovely like lively world. Mm-hmm. It's so fun just to pay attention and see like what kind of details they put into it. Yeah, there's so many ones because especially in the city, you see all like the traffic, the coming going of workers, and there's like a I think it's kind of basically like a blimp, and it like will deflate and inflate to like go oh. down well, <laughs> something or when the clouds go in. It. <laughs> like the 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 air people go into the blimp and they become the air yeah. that fuels. <laughs> the blimp so when they all get out it like deflates and drops into like the second tier where they get on the blimp really fast and it lights the blimp back up. yes <laughs> yes or you have like the little like bullet train kind of thing for the water people mm-hmm. um where they just kind of like they get slurped into the bullet train <laughs> and they all just kind of like <laughs> become yeah, fluid just... inside of it like all together so they just kind of like splurt themselves out at their stop like <laughs> Mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of weird. Like when all the water people are just kind of like all like in there together, you know that they gave me big like they're like one big happy on vibes. Like <laughs> like your essence is like flowing around other people's essence. Like that's that seems far more personal <laughs> than I think it probably is. But yeah, woo. well then it, yeah, it gets even weirder when you think about like these elements wear clothes, but like when water gets like hit or splashes about like their clothes come off them and then they like put their clothes back they just on put the, they just like put the clothes back on yeah or, or several times though wade's clothes like kind of materialize out of the water yeah. instead of him like having to put more clothes on yeah um and i think the water were they were like the only ones that that happened to yeah it's interesting for sure but Strange things when you think about that further. <laughs> <laughs> we need to ask Pixar. They need to answer for these. Yes. <laughs> I, I need scientific conclusions here. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. But talking about, like, the animation, I mean, Pixar has always been there as, like, top tier animation. We've always seen that again and again. But, like, it's always just something just just like, stop and, like, not even just noticing things going on in the background between all these unique characters and the interesting ways they interact with the world, but also just, like, the detail and how there's a lot of, like, photorealistic stuff in this. And it's, it's crazy, like, because sometimes you look at, and it's always, like, a slow scene. Something's mm-hmm. happening or, like, you, you just sit there, you're just like, is that okay? They're, like, they're passing an item back and forth. Is that item real? Like, is that, like, a real thing that they kind of, like, put in the movie? Um, and I'm sure it's not, but, like, or, or some of the locations, you know? Like, the shop at times looks just like it's a real place, and they just animated the characters into it. Mm-hmm. Or, like, there's one point where, like, they're on the beach, and, like, the way the sand looks and, like, the ocean, like, the waves, it's just, like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like there's there are like certain scenes where yeah, you even get like those super up close moments, like one like with the water rushing at one point and you're just like, dang, like, wow, there's a lot going on with that. And even the animation of the characters themselves, they all is so like they're so unique. Like every mm-hmm. element has its own like style to it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And any anytime you get a character of an element like up close, you're just like, oh, like because none of the characters like are still, you know, mm-hmm. some part of them is always doing something, especially yeah. like the fire characters, you know, mm-hmm. um, and just to get all that up close to see the detail to see how things are popping in and out and stuff. I'm, I just it blew my mind. I was like, this is this is something. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I think specifically with like the fire and water characters, like the fire characters, they almost have like, it's almost kind of a slightly more cartoony-esque style to it. 
it i don't know they have a little bit harsher lines to it but you can always like and also so the fire is like constantly moving throughout them like they look like a like a flame that's alive and like flickering and you can see it all and like with the water characters too you can see like the water kind of like swirling inside them or like bubbling about and it's Mm -hmm. it's really interesting but really cool Mm mm-hmm it's if you haven't watched it folks go give it a shot like i know it didn't get a lot of fanfare when it came out but don't Mm -hmm. let that be a guide to like how good a movie is don't let that ever be the Mm -hmm. point of going well i had to really hear anything about that so i'm not gonna watch it like go go watch it please (laughs) do yourself a favor it's a lovely hour and a half two hour experience yeah if you want some good pixar fun but also like a story that will hit you in the feels i recommend for sure this film i will admit Mm -hmm. so i i've only seen this movie i've seen this movie twice now i cried both times i saw this movie (laughs) oh my gosh i think i might have gotten a little teary-eyed like at the end yeah i just um i can't really remember but i i just i was my emotions were all over the place throughout the entire movie so i i don't i can't really say like pinpoint when it really happened but i'm sure i did yeah. no yeah it was yeah so that's me with movies yes i will cry in quite a lot of movies but yeah no it was i'm like oh gosh but it just shows like it's such a good movie that like it still hits the same way seeing it again and so yes listeners for real if you have not seen it this movie go ahead like we said it's on disney plus so check it out there there's also a uh, documentaries on there about the director of this film you should also check that out. It's like about 45 minutes long. And so that kind of deals more with like his personal experiences and talks more about his growing up and all of his influences and inspirations that went into this film. And so you should definitely check that out. It's called Good Chemistry, the story of Elemental. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, listeners, we hope you enjoyed our little all over the place diving into Elemental. Didn't want to give away too much because I think it's important just to watch the movie yourself and enjoy that journey but with that thanks for listening to this episode be sure to follow or subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast so you don't miss out on an episode you can find us on facebook still on that twitter thing instagram at pod (laughs) mastered (laughs) also check us out on youtube where we put all of our episodes and some of our video game gameplay on there so check that out we have video clips from Starfield, Dreamlight Valley, Palea, Hogwarts Legacy, all kinds of stuff on there. We'll continue to put more out there as well. So be sure to check us out there and subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for listening to this week's episode and we hope you tune in to the next one. See ya.